Hello design students. In this video we're going to be focusing on repetition which is another one of basics of surface design or 2D design. So um, whenever we're looking at repetition um, we're going to go into uh, pattern, rhythm, and modularity as being different aspects of repetition that um, create certain rules that you can either meet or break um, to create uh, repetition in your design. Um, so let's get started with um, looking at a very traditional kind of like pattern. So this is like an example of like a wallpaper or a gift wrap or something like that. And uh, these are just some keywords that are important to remember. Um, so uh, within a pattern, so this whole thing, of course, is um, a pattern. Um, and um, motifs are the single unit that makes up that pattern, okay? So these flowers um, are the motifs, even though they're not all the same flowers, there's like three or four variables. Um, but they're repeated and that's the kind of motif, okay? And the organization system that you put the motifs on is going to be like the underlying grid. And those are, you know, they can be invisible or visible, uh, but it's, you know, it's important to kind of like create one, whether it shows up um, as lines or not at the end. So um, this is an example of a pattern. This is a wallpaper by William Morris. Um, you're gonna find a bunch of motifs here and those include peacocks, different kinds of flowers. You have the wolf, you have the rabbit, and um, you have a bunch of different motifs going on here. But whenever you start to kind of like connect some of these pieces together, like the motifs, you create these lines um, that are going to show you that underlying pattern. It may not be as simple as like a very um, simple grid, but it's like a more complex grid um, that allows for that repetition to happen, okay? So you can imagine this pattern that can go into, you know, infinity pretty much, left, right, top, and down. Okay, the next thing we're gonna be looking at is rhythm. Um, and rhythm, I've kind of like divided that into three different parts. You have simple rhythm, and it's just kind of like, it's kind of the same thing as when you hear in music, there's this kind of repetition. You have um, blank, you know, you have silence, and you have sound, and you have different kinds of sound. And the way that they repeat, like, creates a rhythm. So um, here we have simple rhythms uh, where you have this poster and the outline of this poster is repeated over and over and over again, like so. And, you know, it's repeated simply because it's always repeated like with the same distance. It's not getting bigger or smaller. It's quite simple. Some of these other like uh, patterns that I showed you earlier, they're also like quite simple. Then we have alternating rhythms where some things are the same and some things are the are different, right? So here we have these circles um, going on here, right? Um, and they're all the same sizes and they have this thing kind of like looping around the circle and then we have these three bigger circles and a line going through it. I know I'm just kind of like explaining what this looks like but that's kind of like the rhythm going on there but the alternating part is the colors and the way that these like views are facing opposite of each other so they go left right left right left right so and so forth right um and then alternating can also mean like you know maybe you have two or three different motifs and there's a kind of like pattern where you have like Let's say you have um, uh, some kind of like uh, 
a letter, right? You have like C-A-T, like cat. And then you have um, a repetition like C-C-A-A-T-T, C-C-A-A-T-T. So it's kind of like an alternating, alternating rhythm, okay? And then you have progressive, um, and a lot of times progressive, something changes as the repetition happens. So the biggest example here is the hands um, that get bigger and bigger and bigger as they're repeated. Um, they also get um, like there's less number of them. So like on the bottom, we're starting out with like a lot of hands, right? And they're getting, they go from like six to four to one. Um, but of course there is repetition because it's still a hand, but it's the cha the size is changing. Uh, sometimes maybe the direction can change, things like that. So progressive is like when something is changing, but there's still repetition going on in there. Okay. And then the last thing that's going to show us um, what repetition may also have is the idea of modularity. And modularity is really simple. Um, it's kind of similar to like the grid system that I was talking about a few slides earlier, where there's like a uh, underlying organization method that's going to like, like um, organize your design. So if you look here, um, all of these little like, um, I guess they're, they're actually little stamps. They're all different from each other but the way that they are laid out, they're laid out in a modular fashion because they all fit within this grid, right? So you, if you look closely enough, this is a really simple kind of grid. Um, you know, everything kind of stacks and everything is spaced out like perfectly. Um, just the actual drawing or the, the, the stamp, they're all different hands, okay? And there's not much repetition going on in in the motifs but there's repetition where it comes to the organization system so let's make it a little bit more complex so um text fonts things like that are, are another really kind of like <coughs> a standard um, example of modularity um, they all follow a sort of grid or a sort of like system so that they're all proportional to each other, but they're different letters, of course, right? So there's this kind of like really, uh, my, it's like a micro grid. The closer you look, um, there's a grid, but then the way that um, the font kind of like follows that grid um, is not always the same and is forming letters, but there's that underlying organization system that's going to make the whole thing look very cohesive, okay? And then this is another example of modularity. So this artist um, very simply created, it's like tiles, right? If you've seen mosaics or even like tiles and things like that, there's this underlying organization method. Um, I mean, in this case, it's actually visible. You can see it in the finished artwork. Um, but things, uh, of course, there's like little drawings that follow it. Sometimes, for example, this T here is not, doesn't fit into just one of these um, squares, but four of these squares. So it's still modular because it's using that organization system. It's just kind of like changing how much space it's taking, right? It's not randomly scaled up. It's scaled up with like this module in the back of their mind, okay? And then you also have this kind of like um, pattern. This is actually an alternating pattern uh, rhythm you have the diamond, the circle, diamond, circle, diamond, circle. But anyways, um, this little border is, you know, it's, it's going across all of these tiles. It's not that um, random. It's following and it's, you know, it's turning. 
um, where the the sides of the um, the tiles are turning. Um, so there's definitely a system that this artist is following to create um, some of these, right? And then sometimes things can um, uh, the rules can be broken a little bit just to create a little bit of contrast and a little bit of fun. So this piece right here, you have this kind of like re repetitive pattern. There's all kinds of patterns and rhythms and modules going on in this one. So I really think you should, you know, maybe later pause the video and kind of notice all the ways that pattern is used here. But what I was talking about is that this pattern here, this particular one, is exiting this module a little bit and what it does is it creates that contrast that uh, focal point um, that is talked about in another video um, but you know you are when you're designing something you have to think about when you're following the rules and when you are um, breaking those rules how much of the rules are you breaking? Um, and those are the kind of decisions that you should be making when you're designing something. All right, that's it.